push pause. We all have a different connection and history, so it, it, it feels like a family. I wanted to dedicate my time and energy to help young people pursue music education. The goal is to empower kids and to give them a voice, to give them a home where they could go. Welcome to Push Pause. Be sure to tell the story of your neighborhood. Meet the people, see the places, hear the stories. the Hickory Bench Playhouse, everybody, with music and entertainment from around the corner and up your block to the street where you live. The brainchild of Smithtown resident Richard Cashman, the Hickory Bench Playhouse podcast is a throwback to a time when radio was primarily a storytelling medium. That and the show No Pet Strip I hung from the ceiling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, we have to stop Rick from left. Okay. okay. We're telling a story. People don't tell stories anymore. We communicate in 120 characters. It's all edited. It's shorthand. We uh, we have emojis. We don't talk about We have emojis with our thumbs, so we communicate with our thumbs. But this is, uh, you know, going back to a time when people told stories, and that's all we're doing. And and people ask, are you trying to make people laugh? And, no, we're just trying to be social. We're not doing anything. You know, we're not solving any of the problems of the world. We're not coming up with some great medical procedure that's going to save it. We're just there together to have some fun. That's why it's in the bathroom. Baby's all dead. Yes! Isn't he a devil? Recorded at Sesame Street Studios in Manhattan, the show features acting and voiceover veterans Ivy Austin and Richard Muins. Well, there's just like a flakes. Yes. I mean, yes. frogs. I came into the world into a theatrical family and theaters I, I grew up on the road hearing uh musicals uh 24 7 so it was it's kind of in my blood i need some campbells for morty in accounting morty in accounting also i have been um part of the part of the works here at sesame street for many years i've done a lot of recordings with the muppets and so that's, I guess, how I got my, my voiceover wings. We're trying to get back to Lake Winnipesaukee, and all you're doing is poking fun at us. Yeah, I'm going to take my poison ivy outside, and I'm going to use my six pair of legs and get out of here. Feet don't fail me now. I started out in, in uh, voice, uh, legit, the uh, opera, uh, chamber opera, and uh, doing all the... Uh, the big chorus, the uh, professional chorus jobs in the city. That was where I started singing. Conundrum? Is that like a percussion instrument? We, but then I did do radio. I did the Gar Garrison Keeter program, which when it was here at American Radio Company of the Air. But I first got into um, the radio sketches when I started working for Garrison Keeler. And uh, that was back, that was, uh, I met him in 1989. I worked on the show from 89 to 93, uh, most of the time with Richard Muins, and we were partners in crime on that show. And uh, that was really my, my first taste of radio sketch comedy. Let's punch that ticket! Yeah, Jerome, let's punch that ticket! It's like Winnipesaukee or bust! And bust it was, an adventure that was... I had met Ivy, who had done... I had written a Christmas book, and she had done the narration. So I called Ivy, and I said, you want to do this podcast? And she said, yes. And uh, then she said, I, I, I know Rich Muins, who was on Broadway and stuff, all sorts of stuff. He, he'd like to join, too. And, and I said, well, okay. So we all met, and we put this together. And, and the concern when you're doing this is, is, one, you've got to have people who are really good. Ivy and Rich become the character. Jonathan Winter said, you know, you can dress somebody up in the funniest outfit, give them the funniest script, but if they don't think funny, it's not funny. And, and so it was great running into Ivy and Rich who just think funny. We're having a blast. Hands down, blast. Um, and we all have a different 
connection and history, so it, it, it feels like a family. My perspective is push record and get out of the way. Um, chances are uh, something will happen if I don't help them. I, I think we know our chicken parts in here. <laughs> They're so funny, each one of them in their own uh, right. You, you just say hello, get them in the good mood, and throw them in the studio. Rolling. You are no help. We are trying to get back to Lake Winnipesaukee, and all you are doing is poking fun at us. Yeah. I was the connector here to Tom's fun in the studio when we were looking for a place to call home for the show, and um, I had recently run into Tom, and I thought, ah, light bulb. What a, what a perfect match here. It's a great sense of camaraderie with Rick and Tom and, and Ivy and Tom and, and Rick. And I feel like they're people that I've known uh, forever. It's just been uh, nothing but fun from the get-go. Right down to the giblets. You really are. <laughs> giblets. <laughs> okay, I just heard. We just feed off of each other. We don't have to ask too many questions. We just go for it, and and it's a give and take. And so it's it's nice, it's nice professionally and socially. I mean, what what more could you ask for? For Push Pause in Manhattan, this is Greg Blank. Miss Beasley, it still smells like chicken soup in there. I like